Hello and welcome to yet another video by Pale Blue Thoughts. Today we will talk a bit about evolution. Evolution is perhaps one of the most controversial and much debated topics in science even after it having been proven with mountains of evidence. So why do people find it difficult to grasp this simple looking theory? That is what we will look in today's video. How can we understand evolution in a better manner so that we can finally grasp the grandeur of perhaps the greater discovery of man since the heliocentric model of the solar system. We will use two examples to explain the points. If you are a person who likes to understand science in a simpler manner and you want your misconceptions about everyday things removed, then please subscribe to my channel, Pale Blue Thoughts, the channel which promotes scientific temper and denounces pseudoscience. In everyday English, evolution simply means change. In biology, evolution states that all living organisms came from earlier forms of life. The theory of evolution by natural selection explains why evolution occurs. Charles Darwin, the person who proposed this theory, spent over 20 years traveling around the world and making observations before he fully developed his theory. What Darwin proposed now stands tall as the theory of biological evolution. Today nothing in biology makes sense except under the light of evolution. All the complex creatures that we see today have evolved from creatures which existed earlier through minor changes called as mutations. One thing that needs to be noted is that this theory does not discuss how life first developed on earth. That is a separate branch altogether known as abiogenesis. Evolution kicks in once the first living molecule came into being. So the first living molecule would have been a simple cell. We call those single cell beings as prokaryotes and it took millions of years for prokaryotes to develop an internal machinery like cell walls, nucleus etc which enabled them to become more complex. We call them eukaryotes. From there it evolved into multicellular animals over millions of years through mutations happening in the copies that they created. So why do people fail to grasp this simple theory? There are two reasons that I see. The first culprit is time mainly our ability to grasp time. The second is our inability to understand how gradual changes lead to complex processes. And that is what I want to simplify for you today. Let us first look at the time scales involved for evolution. Today there is undisputed evidence that there was life on earth at least 3.5 billion years ago. Now we know that there are mutations that occur when animals make copies of itself until at some point they become two or new species. For a detailed video on this, you can check out the videos on evolution that I have done earlier over here. So back to our topic. I'm going to start with one multicellular animal K which lived 3.5 billion years ago. Why K? Well just like evolution, I just wanted the name to be random as well. And the time scales that I'm going to employ are also to be taken as an example to make you understand it easily. So don't assume that actual evolution takes exactly the same amount of years that I have chosen. So let us assume that it takes 5 million years or 50 lakh years for K to change to P. Every 5 million years, this animal splits into two separate species. Now if we consider the total time, 3.5 billion years, how many branches would K have made? 700. It would have split 700 times, each new species separated by 5 million years. Now let us assume that the parents of the newer species goes extinct and only the new species survive. So after 700 branches, how many species could be present today? Please note that I am using the word could and not should. How many species could have been present given we follow the estimates that we have made? Any guesses? Don't bother taking your calculators out. It won't fit in there. The number is 5 followed by 210 zeros. There has been enough time to create that many species until now. That is a huge, unimaginable number. Now, if we look at the history of the Earth, we know that there has been five mass extinctions where the whole species of animals have become extinct, like what happened with our dinosaurs and saber-toothed tigers. Now, we know that during such mass extinctions, not all species die out completely. Some may survive. Now, let us assume that after each mass extinction, only one species survived, just to make life simpler for us. It is a very liberal estimate 
the actual percentages might be as high as 50 to 60 percent but we will take the worst case scenario just one species survived after each mass extinction now we again let evolution take its course so how many species could we see today that is a number where one is followed by 42 zeros but in reality how many species do we have in our world today the answer is difficult to compute but current estimates put it at 8.7 million let us extrapolate it and say that there are 1 trillion species in this world currently. That is 1 followed by 12 zeros. This is a very very small number compared with 1 followed by 42 zeros. Just a mere fraction of what would have been possible given enough time. What I am trying to get to at is this. If you are ready to understand the vastness of time, if you are able to grasp this fact, you can understand that there has been more than enough time for all these diversities to occur naturally. The problem is we are not capable of processing such a huge amount of time in our tiny brains. For us, it is just a lot of years. So if you look at this really liberal model, there has been enough and more time to create all the species that we see today with a lot of time to spare. All it requires for you to understand evolution is to grasp its simple concepts of mutation and natural selection and the not so simple concept of enormous time. So I hope you have been able to understand that there is no dearth of time for anyone to prove that evolution is a fact. Now for those who may be confused with regards to how these complexities occur, let us look at another simple example. Let us take the case of a simple number lock, the ones which we use to lock our suitcases or bicycles. It may have the numbers 1 to 0 in each of the dials. Only one particular combination opens the lock. What are the odds of finding the correct number if you don't know the code that I have set? Let us take the simple case where the lock has only one dial. You would have to take a maximum of 10 tries to get it right. You may get it right the first time, but if you are unlucky, you would have to try at least 10 tries from 0 to 9 to open the lock. Now what if the lock had two dials. For each of the first dial, there are 10 possibilities for the second dial, right? So if you took 10 tries for dial 1, there are 10 tries possible for dial 2, which makes it 100 trials to get the right combination. Now what if it had three dials? If you have the patience to try it a thousand times, you would be able to open the lock. Four dials, 10,000. Five dials, one lakh combinations. Now as each addition of a dial, the possible combinations goes up by multiples of 10 with me so far now let us come to complexity let us assume a four dial lock which gives birth to a lock and due to mutation this time an additional dial gets added this is a 10,000 combination lock which gives rise to a lock which has one lakh combinations obviously it is more complex than its parent now here comes the interesting part you already know the combination of the four dial lock if you want to find out the combination of the fifth dial how many tries would you need? Think, think. The number of tries that get increased from 10,000 to 1 lakh is 90,000. But do you need to try out all the 90,000? No, because you already know the combination of the four digit lock. So the difference between one lock to the next, provided we know the first set of combinations is just 10. It is the same in the case of biological evolution. If the difference between one species to another is small, it can happen by random chance because the number of possibilities are very very less. Take the complexities that we usually find difficult to grasp such as the complexities of the eye. It becomes easier to understand when we see that our eye evolved from an earlier form of eye which had just one dial lesser than what we have. It is not really complex if you have knowledge about the previous dials. Random mutations don't require too much tries to find the next combination. It can happen by random chance. If the mutation is beneficial, then the species would survive. If not, it will perish. Evolution 101. So if you want to understand evolution better, all you need to understand are two things. That random mutations happen gradually and the chance of that happening can easily come about naturally as you have seen with the number lock analogy. Secondly, there has been enough time for evolution to have occurred multiple times. You just need to grasp the time frames involved. So I hope this video helped you understand evolution a little bit better. Do let me know in the comments. Also do share this video with your friends and family and also to evolution deniers if you have any within your circle. 
Evolution is a fact and that cannot be denied with our current understanding of biology. The faster we accept that, the better. Well, I hope you like this video. Please click on subscribe and hit and break the bell icon if you haven't already. Please, it's a request. With each touch of the buttons, this channel will continue to evolve for the better. I will be back soon with yet another scientific video. Until then, it's me, Anand, saying bye-bye from Pale Blue Thoughts.